Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology in Module 7, Infectious Disease. This is video number 12, and we're going to be focusing on host responses to pathogens. However, I'm going to split this up into two different sections, because as we go through this video, we're going to be focusing on both the first and the second lines of defense. So the overarching learning um, outcome that you're looking for here is that you can analyze responses to the presence of pathogens by assessing the physical and chemical changes that occur in the host animal's cells and tissues. So this encompasses primarily um, the first and the second lines of defense. And so I'm going to split them up uh, into two sort of sub sections of this particular uh, of the video to address this particular learning outcome. What we want you to do is to be able to define the term immunity to contrast innate and adaptive immunity and then discuss a range of the physical, chemical and biological responses to pathogens. So we're going to try and wrap um, a number of things together here uh, and hopefully by the end of the next couple of videos uh, you'll have a good understanding of how uh, our bodies combat pathogens. So in the second half of this video what I want to look at is the second line of defense. Now we've looked previously at the first line of defense which is primarily the skin, mucous membranes and some chemical secretions that help to create an environment that's not ideal for pathogens to live. But we cut our skin. Uh, we, we develop um, infections in our mucous membranes. We develop colds. Um, we swallow pathogens in our food. Uh, we sometimes get infections in our, uh, in our reproductive or uh, urinary systems. So this first line of defense isn't foolproof. In fact, none of these lines of defense are foolproof, but combined together, they do help to give our bodies extremely good protection uh, against invasion from pathogens. And in this second half of the video, we're going to look at the second line of defense. So from here in, the second and the third line of defense that we're going to look at are going to involve uh, white blood cells. The difference between the white blood cells that are involved in the second line of defense and those that are involved in the third line of defense is their specificity. So phagocytosis is a general name that we give to cells that can kind of flow around another and engulf it. Um, it they're kind of like the body's uh, Pac-Men. They just go and munch things. Now they're indiscriminate except for the fact that they're trying to find non-self. So my phagocytic cells are going to try and find um, material that is not part of me, that it doesn't recognize as self, and therefore try and destroy it. So this is what happens with these cells, and there are particular types of white blood cells. Um, we'll look at a couple of examples, monocytes, uh, and neutrophils, some examples of the type of uh, white blood cells that we might find specializing in this process of phagocytosis or contributing to this um, second line of defense. In phagocytosis, we have chemotaxis, which is basically a method for locating antigens, and antigens are going to be something we're going to talk about a little bit later, especially when we talk about the third line of defense. And they result in the release of cytokines. They adhere to the pathogens. Sometimes they will actually kind of stick to them and then ingest and then digest. So basically what will happen is that the um, cell will grab a pathogen, will basically um, move its cell contents around the pathogen, draw it into the cell, and then um, particular enzymes within the cell will then break down the pathogen and release those um, unwanted cell products. So one type of... Um, white blood cell or phagocyte that's involved in this um, particular defense are called neutrophils. And neutrophils are found in blood and also in the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system we will talk about in a little bit of detail um, as we go through this section because the lymphatic system is very, very important in uh, helping our bodies resist disease. They leave the blood through capillary walls and then they move through the surrounding tissues. So they're actually capable of, of really going on reconnaissance missions and looking for anywhere in the body where there may be material that is not self, that is not part of, of that human body or that animal body for that matter. 
Uh, neutrophils can be attracted by chemicals released by bacteria, so they can actually home in on specific chemicals that, again, are not part of self, but are part of some foreign um, microorganism. They usually involve uh, in the fight against infection for the short term, they only live a small number of days. So there's actually different levels of response of the phagocytes that we'll look at on, based on the different types of phagocytes. And the neutrophils are the ones that are really uh, only the first wave. They kind of hit early um, and then they wait for the next wave to come through. The second group are the macrophages. And the macrophages are, tend to be found more in the liver and the lymph glands and they're formed when monocytes leave the bloodstream. The macrophages are macro meaning big and, and phage comes from the same part of um, the word as phagocyte. So these are the big munchers. Basically, these are the ones that are going to take up foreign bodies. They swallow uh, poisons or other chemicals secreted by the pathogens and um, the actual microorganisms themselves. And they fight infection longer term. So they are really the scavengers. Uh, of the body and they're going to come in behind the neutrophils in order to um, clean up anything that's that's not been picked up by that first wave uh, they're they're very very uh, they're larger and they are able to destroy larger particles than the neutrophils and then one of the consequences of the macrophage response is they may be there for some period of time so this is a much longer term response a good way of contrasting um, the function of the neutrophils with the function of the macrophages now one of the things that we also find happening is that when tissue becomes becomes injured. So one of the simplest ways to breach the first line of defense is for you to get a cut or a graze. If you remove some of the skin from your body, then you've actually created another opening. But now the opening is often straight into the blood system. And the blood system is critical for a lot of pathogens because it's the transport system. It's what moves the pathogens from one place to another, particularly their preferred place. So it becomes really important when we cut ourselves or when we open our skin in some way for our body to respond quickly and in order to try and seal um, that wound and restore um, that physical barrier that we've, that we've damaged. One of the ways that that happens is that when we injure tissue, we release particular types of chemicals that are going to um, have a little bit of a flow on effect. So bradykinin is one of the chemicals that's released and this causes particular types of cells called mast cells to release something that I'm sure you've heard of before called histamines. Now histamines is an interesting one because a lot of people have actually heard of antihistamines rather than histamines and antihistamines are counters to this response. So the, the usually antihistamines go with something like um, allergic responses or a hypersensitivity and over response to a particular stimulus. But histamines are very important because what they do is they basically signal to the body that something has happened, that we need to bring cells uh, white blood cells to a particular site because it's been breached, it's been damaged in some way. As a result of the release of histamines, we can get uh, arterial, arterial dilation. So um, that's where the, the uh, smaller blood vessels um, will open up a little bit more, which will bring more blood through, um, which is often going to explain things like redness, um, swelling around the site of an infection or a potential infection uh, and there's an increase in the permeability of the transport tissues, the vascular tissues. A lot of stuff is going on when we cut ourselves. We've, we've got the release of uh, platelets too that are going to try and clot the blood so that we don't bleed out through whatever this wound is. Uh, but we've also got these mast cells releasing histamines. They're going to be drawing in um, white blood cells, phagocytes to the site to try and um, identify and destroy any invading uh, material, any pathogens, uh, any chemicals that maybe are getting into our body. So this is a real um, uh, a genuine response of the body to some damage that's occurred in that first line of defense. Remember though that what we're talking about in both the first and the second line are non-specific responses. It doesn't actually matter in one sense what type of pathogen may have entered our body through one of these breaks, this response is a generalized response. It's non-specific. 
the histamines are just drawing those cells in and um, and and so therefore we're fighting on a, on a general uh, invasion in our body through a break in that physical barrier. It's the third line of defense when we actually want to know a little bit more about the specifics of the pathogen and therefore develop a specific response. But the inflammatory response is still a useful component of this second line of defense because it actually allows that uh, extra volume of blood, those extra white blood cells um, to be able to take up the fight against this um, break in the physical barrier. Some of the effects then of the inflammatory response include the swelling of capillaries. So you get that increased permeability. This leads to the reddening. This allows more white blood cells to enter the infected area. And it also uh, is often indicated by the presence of pus. Now, pus is evidence of dead and dying white blood cells. So you know that your body is working when you see pus. It may not feel like it's a nice thing to see, but you know you, that your body is healthy and it's working well. Um, you also probably be aware of the fact there may well be some sort of an infection there as well. Um, but your white blood cells are working hard to get in. Uh, the neutrophils primarily are getting in in that first wave to try and combat any invasion that's occurred, any breach through that first line of defense, and then macrophages coming in behind those in response to the release of histamines from the mast cells. This has been a lot of material to cover and we've only covered two of the three lines of defense. The third line of defense is actually the specific immune response and we'll look, that, look at that uh, in a future video. But there was so much material here that I thought it was easy to break it down into two separate videos. So I hope you'll put these together and be able to get a little flow between the first and the second lines of defense against disease. Thanks for watching.